Captain Jack is back in his fifth outing in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. It's been six years since we last seen Jack Sparrow in On Stranger Tides, but do we welcome his return? Now I've watched this movie this opening weekend and I'm here to give you my review, but first Let's read the premise. Thrust into an all new adventure, a down on his luck Captain Jack Sparrow feels the winds of ill fortune blowing even more strongly when deadly ghost sailors led by his old nemesis, the evil Captain Salazar, escapes from Devil's Triangle. Jack's only hope of survival lies in seeking out the legendary trident of Poseidon, but to fight it he must forge an uneasy alliance with the brilliant and beautiful astronomer and a headstrong young man in the British Army. So after watching this movie, I can honestly say I enjoyed it. It was surprisingly entertaining and it really harkens back to the original movie, The Curse of the Black Pearl. The story is simple and less convoluted, with lots of expertly crafted action set pieces and lots of comedy throughout the movie. Some of the highlights of this movie is getting to see your favorite characters all over again. You get to see every character who's still alive in this franchise in some capacity. Now I grew up with the Pirates franchise and I still adore it to some degree. Time may have passed, but I still find pleasure in watching these movies all over again. For the acting, Johnny Depp slips effortlessly into the role that made him an international superstar. He commands the screen with swagger and charisma like any lead actor should. Now I personally think that Jack Sparrow is one of the best fictional cinematic characters to feature on the big screen, so it's a real pleasure to get to see him again. The ever reliable Jeffrey Rush as Hector Barbosa is still a delight to see, and he actually has an emotional arc this time around. As the main villain, I was really looking forward to see Javier Bardem's portrayal of Captain Salazar in this movie, and he didn't disappoint. His character is actually pretty sinister, and Bardem actually gives him his own personal flair, so his, his character is not some Davy Jones ripoff. The lead actress in this movie is a new character actually. She's brave, smart, and independent, in a time where women like her are not seen with those characteristics. As Will Turner's son, Brenton Thwaites doesn't really have much to do. We understand what motivates him, but I feel like his story is very small compared to the rest of the plot. The action is actually very cleverly executed, with swashbuckling sword fighting on top of huge action pieces with lots of comedy throughout, which is just what you want to see in a Pirates movie. This is what makes the Pirates franchise fun, and they follow that trend throughout this movie as well. I actually personally laughed out loud a few times in this movie, and that's definitely a plus. Now this movie is not perfect. For example, there are certain things in this movie that bug me. One thing, for example, is that Orlando Bloom was hyped to reappear in this movie. He appears, but we really don't see him again for a very long stretch of time. Throughout the movie, I kept wondering, where is Will Turner? Also, at 2 hours and 9 minutes, this is actually the shortest Pirates of the Caribbean movie. And even though it is short, it actually felt pretty long, which is kind of a bad thing if you think about it. The story can slow down here and there, but on the bright side, it is much less convoluted than other Pirates movies before it. However, I would have preferred if they cut some scenes from the movie, because it feels like it does slow down the pace for the movie. Now, where does it rank among the other films? I would actually personally rank it the third best of the franchise. My favorite movies are still Curse of the Black Pearl and uh, Dead Man's Chest. And I didn't personally like number three and four at World's End and um, On Stranger Tides. Mainly because they're pretty convoluted and the plot is just not that interesting to me. This movie is a great example of a summer blockbuster because it provides two hours of escapist fun. Now when I go in to watch a movie, I don't go in expecting high art. I go in to be entertained and I definitely was entertained when I watched this movie. So that is why I would give it my best recommendation. You should definitely check it out if you want to be entertained. Overall, I would give it three out of five stars because even though it's a very fun movie, it's not the best movie of the franchise or the best movie of the summer. Now do I want to see a sequel? Absolutely, because if they keep making these fun summer action blockbusters, then I'll be there opening weekend as well. But honestly, we have to wait and see what the box office holds for this movie. Because if there's a thirst for the audience for this movie, then absolutely they'll make sequels for it. Now the ending seems to uh, tie up a lot of loose ends and it seems pretty climactic. I would personally say that the end of this franchise with this movie will be a fitting conclusion for this franchise. However, for those of you who don't know, there's actually a post credit scene. For those of you willing to wait past the ending credits, it retreated to a small scene that sets up a sequel and also the return of a fan favorite character. Now I'm not going to spoil who that character is, but I'm pretty excited to see where they go from here. It's going to be pretty cool. So there you have it guys, that's my review for Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales. I hope you like this review, and if you like it, please like and subscribe to this channel, and please leave a comment down below whether you like this video, movie or not. I really like to hear what you guys think. So take care guys, bye!